When it comes to camera grinding, shotguns are often one of the easiest, and you'll be pleased to know in Modern Warfare 3 this is no different. I'll be going through all three shotguns step by step, so feel free to skip around to the parts you require. If you find this video helpful, then support the channel by hitting like, and if you want to see more guys like this in the future, just make sure to smash that sub button. We're going to start this video by going over the loadout quickly, and I'm going to highly recommend you use a decoy grenade. This is going to help you get that weapon XP, level up them weapons faster. If you're in war, throw it over the objectives. If you're in rust, try and throw it near enemies where the gunfights are happening. Lethal and field upgrade don't matter too much, so don't worry about them. Gloves, I've gone for commando just because I like to reload while sprinting. And with a shotgun, I think that's quite important. Now, sneakers are the main thing on this list here. Just because we're close and personal to the enemy, we don't want them hearing us. We don't want them knowing that we're coming. The element of surprise is absolutely key here. Now I've gone EOD padding just because in war there's grenades flying everywhere, but you can pick anything that you prefer. Now a quick alternative to the infantry vest is to actually equip the engineer vest. It is going to give you an extra tactical, which means more weapon XP, but we do lose a lethal, but it doesn't matter too much. And it's also going to give you an extra slot at the end here. So you could have the reload speed and the EOD padding, or we could stay off the radar and have EOD padding. It just allows you to be slightly more tactical. If we move on to leveling up now, and the game mode I'm going to recommend isn't exactly going to shock you. Rust or Shipment 24-7 are small maps that don't allow your enemies to get away, especially Shipment. These can often have high skill based matchmaking though and the dodgy spawns to go with it. So if you find yourself hunting for an alternative then I'd recommend war. This game mode has a more relaxed approach to skill based matchmaking allowing you to actually enjoy your gaming. Not only that, the first and third sections of the map are very tight and require your enemies to group onto objectives meaning easy kills for a shotgun user like us. This moves us onto the four basic challenges which are the same for all three shotguns. The first being the easiest, which is 50 kills, a nice easy start that will be completed while leveling up. The second challenge is slightly harder with 50 hit fire kills being required. To make this easier, just keep that distance nice and close and a good class can really help. So here are three hit fire builds that I would use that can help you get this challenge done nice and easy. For the Riveter, you can swap the laser for no stock, but I just felt the recoil was a little bit too heavy. Just 10 kills while aiming down sight is the third challenge and this should be a breeze. Just make sure you have fully aimed in for this one to count, as sometimes I would fire a little bit too quick, therefore it wouldn't count. The final basic challenge is to get 10 double kills and sticking with rust or war are your best options. Small maps or objective based game modes allow you to run into multiple enemies all the time, giving you the best chance of a double kill. Gilded or Gold is up next, and again it's the same for all three shotguns. This time we are tasked with getting two kills shortly after sprinting in just one life. Now you don't need to get both kills in the same sprint, you can pick up a kill, run again and then pick up your second kill after. Try not to overthink this one, just keep running around tight areas with cover and anything up close you have the advantage. Last tip for this one is to make sure you have the sneakers unlocked. If the enemies can hear your footsteps, this is going to be a lot harder. Once you've completed Gilded for all three shotguns, we then unlock the Forge Challenge. This time, each shotgun has a different challenge. Starting with the Lockwood, we need to get 25 one-shot kills while aiming down sight. Two ways of approaching this one. You could use a slug class like this one and treat it a little like a sniper. Or you could go for fast ADS and continue to keep the gunfights nice and close. Again, just make sure you're fully aimed in for these kills to count. Up second is the Haymaker with three hit fire kills with one magazine. Using the same classes earlier and playing this tactical will make this a lot easier. Keep the gunfights as close as possible and stay out of large areas. I personally did this in war, again to skip skill based matchmaking and use the objective to my advantage. If you find yourself struggling, try sticking to a building or an area with lots of cover and take your time. Let the enemies come to you. Lastly, we have the Riveter, which is to get 25 multi kills, and this basically just means 25 double kills. Considering you have already completed 10 double kills with this weapon, it's just a case of more of the same. For the last part of this video, I'm going to let a couple of the best classes for each shotgun play through. I won't go into any details, but if you'd like me to start talking about classes more in the future, 
and why I pick attachments, I'm always happy to do so. The truth is, with YouTube, I have to be careful of my average watch time, so I don't want to bore you guys. Thank you for watching, let me know which your favourite class is, and I'll see you in the next one.